Hello and welcome to Sparky Help. This is the easy guide to trunking and conduit sizing for electrical installations. Please like, share and subscribe. Why do we need to size conduit and trunking? Well, it's all about capacity and not overfilling the trunking or conduit systems and making sure you can put the cables in with ease. So guidance that you may take into consideration, as we've just said, care for drawing in cables, uh, the use of space, size of the cables, and the size of enclosures to name but a few things that you consider. Only the ease of drawing in is taken into account the electrical effects of grouping are not, and this is from the on-site guide. Installation here, and an installation here with 2.5 conductors in a 20mm conduit installation. We have 6 2.5s in this particular one, and 12 2.5s in this particular one. You can see they've gone in, but which is acceptable? Do you need to put lubrication on the cables to help install them? This may be necessary anyway. As ever, let's always look at an example. So, how many 2.5 stranded single core conductors can be installed in a straight 2 metre length of 20 millimetre conduit system? So, in order to do this, we go to Appendix E of the on site guide, and there we have tables available. And here we have a table, and all we've got to do is look up the table heading for the suits your scenario. This one is, as we say on there, cable factors for short, straight runs of conduit up to 3 metres in length. And cables are given factors. It's based on their cross sectional area, but it's a meaningless, unitless number. So, as we can see on here, then we've got solid and stranded types of cables, and we select the type that we've got. So, we'll go for stranded. 2.5, and that has a factor of 43. Remember, this is a unit less number, so it's just a factor given to it to help with our calculations. So we can go back to our question, and we found the factor for a 2.5 millimeter squared cable, and this includes the insulation, and it has a factor of 43. What we now need to do is we go look up on this particular table, table E2. Some standard sizes selected, 16. We don't see that very often. 20 and 25, more familiar. And you can see the factors available for them. And again, this is a unitless number, so it's just a number and it's associated with the size of this conduit. And we select our 20 millimeter and it has a factor of 460. And we can add that back into our question. So we now have the factor for the conduit, we have the factor for the cable, and it's how many of these will fit into it. So we have this as a calculation. To work out the number of conductors, you take the conduit factor, divide it by the cable factor. In this case, we have an answer of 10.67. So therefore, the answer is 10, because you can't put 0.67 of a cable in. According to the on-site guide, then 10 is the maximum. Let's take another example. How many 2.5 mm squared stranded single core conductors can be installed in a 2 meter length of 20 millimeter conduit, but this time with two bends. So now we have a different table to go to, the factors for the cables. So you just need to make sure again you pick this one, and this one is for conduit factors for long straight runs over three meters or runs of any length incorporating bends. So the factors are slightly different. So there we've got our factors. We're going to pick a 2.5. And it doesn't matter whether it's solid or stranded this time, it has a factor of 30 that's been given to it. And there's our factor for a 2.5s. And now what we do is we go to this table, table E4. And as you can see on this, down in the first column, you've got the length of run. And it goes beyond this, but I've only shown a so short selection. And then you've got the conduit sizes across the top, starting 16 up to 32. On-site guide does cover larger conduit sizes, but there's a multiplier to be applied if you have, let's say, a 50 mil conduit system, which is available within the book. But this will cover most installations. So we need to select 20 millimeter, and we said in our example, two bends. And it was two meters in length. So we go across there and we look down and that gives us a factor of 256. 
or a 20mm 2 bends 2 meters in length. And that gives us our factor. And then again it's a straightforward calculation. Conjure factor divided by cable factor, so 256 divided by 30, and we now it drops down to 8. So we can put 8 conductors in this particular scenario given here. Like I say, these are just guides so you can put more in should you so wish. What size conduit would be required? The following single core stranded circuits are to be installed in a 1.5 meter length with two bends. So now we've got a ring final circuit for those in the UK, and that's going to be 2.5 millimeter squared, and then one times lighting circuit, which is a 1.5 millimeter squared. So what do we need to do? So let's go look at the table factors for the cables. So we have a selection of 1.5s and 2.5s, and there's our factors. 22 and 30 respectively for their size. So we can put those figures in. Now let's work out how many conductors we actually have. So it's one ring final, so therefore there are six conductors at 2.5, so that's become six times 30. And that gives us a value of 180 for the total number of 2.5s. And then we can apply that also to the lighting circuit. There would be three conductors, that's line neutral and CPC. And that's 3 times 22, which gives us a value of 66. So what do we do now? We add them up. That gives a total of 246. Remember, this is just a factor taken from the IET on-site guide. And then we can go back to our table again, table E4. The length of run was 1.5. It had two bends. And we look across for a number that is above 246. So we look for cross for a number that is above 246 at 1.5 meters, and that takes us to this one here. And actually, a 20 mil conjure will actually support all of those conductors. If we had a larger number of con conductors or more conductors going in, then you'd look across accordingly. So therefore, we've sized our conjure for that. Obviously, just thought I'd chuck this one in. This was an installation that I saw when I was out and about. Took a photo of it because it was utterly appalling. But it does prove an example how not to do something, but look at the number of bends. The more bends you put in, the harder it is to pull cables through it. I should imagine there is a fire alarm cable or two maybe inside that. They did well to put that in like that. I don't think I would have accepted it. So now we're going to look at the sizing of trunking. And in trunking, we have something called space factor for cables, and it says it should not exceed 45% of the trunking. That's a cross-sectional area, and here are our conductors that fill up the trunking in whatever shape or form or number of circuits that we tend to put in. And the cable, including sheath, is 45%. And it's all the free air and space that is 55%, so 45% of the installation needs to be the cable, which includes the sheath. In all cases, when we do all of these things, grouping is not taken into account. So here's a trunking. It's got a number of conductors in. I didn't count how many were in there, but there's a fair few. Um, and it looks quite compact. But remember, there are spaces in between the cables because cables generally are round. So therefore, you're going to always get a space. So though it like, might look fairly congested, it may actually be meeting the requirements. But there is a fair number of conductors in there. So let's look at this trunking system and let's see if we can work out the size of trunking, how to apply the on-site guide. So here's a selection of circuits that are going to be installed. Four lighting circuits, four ring vinyl circuits, one immersion heater and a radial electric heater. And we've got the conductor sizes and we want to determine the smallest size of trunking that could be used from the following information. But not necessarily the one you want to maybe install, but... For a purpose, we're going to find out what the smallest would be on the information that we provide. First thing we need to do, we need to look at the factors for the cables. And we go to this time, we go to table E5. You'll find the on-site guide is breaking into conduit, and then it goes trunking. And there I've got it, I've got stranded, and we've got the sizes. And now we need to know, is it a thermoplastic cable, the PVC, or is it a thermosetting cable? And if we go back here, I said it was a thermo plastic. So we go across to thermoplastic and a 1.5 has a factor of 8.6 and a 2.5 has a factor of 12.6. So 
So we can put those values in there. So they're the cable factors. Now what we need to do is we work out the number of conductors available. So let's take the lighting circuit as there's only one set of 1.5s. So there are four lighting circuits. There will be three conductors. We'll make the assumption that there is a line neutral and CPC for each. So that gives us 12. And then let's look at the ring final. There are four circuits. There will be six conductors for each one. So remember two lines, two neutrals and two CPCs. And that gives us that value and so on and so forth, and you work your way through. We need to total up all the 2.5s that we've got. So 24, 3 and 12, and that gives us 39 2.5 conductors. And we can now apply this down the bottom. So we know we've got 12 1.5s, and we multiply that, that becomes 103.2. And we've got 12.6 times 39 conductors and that gives us a value of 491.4. All we need to do now is add them up and there's our total for all of our conductors and we can now apply this and compare this with the on-site guide values for the factors of the trunkings available. And here we have table E6. So we look along here and we're just, with the information that I've provided we're going to look at the first column here and look at the factors. The question was we want to find the smallest, so let's look at the smallest number up there that is bigger than our value, which is 594.6. So if we look there, the smallest one is 738, which is bigger than our value. So it actually is a 75 by 25 trunking is the smallest available. This may be a different answer if you asked what trunking would you select? Because you're going to select the profile, the size, the dimensions that is suitable for where you're going to install it. Probably the most common on there available would probably be a 50 by 50, but it does depend. It might be plastic. I don't know. You're the designers, you decide. So we're going to select a 75 by 25 would be the smallest trunking available with the information provided. So let's look at this then. How many 2.5 conductors? would fit in a 50 by 50 trunking. So we said earlier that it's about the space of the conductors. And we've got that example there with a fair few conductors in there. So the question might be, how many 2.5s can we get in that 50 by 50 trunking? So we're going to go back to the factors again, and we'll take this, we'll go for stranded 2.5, and we'll go for thermoplastic 12.6. Therefore, there's our factor for our conductors. We want a 50 by 50 trunking that has a factor of 1037. And we'll put that answer in there. And then we've got to do a simple division. The trunking factor divided by the cable factor. And that gives us a value of 82.3. Therefore, the number of conductors you can put in is 82. That's quite a lot. But remember, there's space in between. So the drawing that I've given you is indicative. It's just given a representation. So I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll just leave you with this final shot. Uh, pick the faults, pick what's right. Uh, thank you very much.